who don't want to believe God. Right? So they start making excuses. Like, well, we can't do this. They're going to call the cops. This, that, and other. Dude, like, I don't care if they call the cops. I don't care what happened. I came out here. I'm all in with this thing. We're getting this dude in front of Jesus. Right? So they bring him. And they take him. And they rope him up. And they bring him up on top of the house. Now, that was a job. They had to go through some stuff. They didn't already walk there. Now they're lifting him up. Put him on top of the house. I have a friend. He's paralyzed from the waist down. And my friend, I've been at his house. When the nurses come to take him out of his chair to clean him. And when they pick him up out of his chair, he, it, something happens with their muscles and his muscles start shaking. And, man, I just feel bad for him. It's, I, I, it's a painful thing. And it just, man, it's just something like if you ain't like that, you, it's, it's something to see. So I can just imagine with this guy, man, he's, he's shaking, you know, and they're trying to pick him up. And, man, this is already crazy. You understand what I'm saying? It's already crazy for us to be talking about ripping this roof open and taking him on top of the house. This is already crazy, right? So then they, they get him on top of the house. And the Bible says that they, they start scooping out the ceiling. So they start opening up the ceiling. They're, they're ripping the ceiling open. Now can you imagine everybody inside the house? The Bible says it was a house full. Yeah. And so they look up and dust start coming off the roof. <laughs> they look up and I can just see one of them dudes stick his head down there and say, hey! You know what I mean? And then the next thing they see is this guy being lowered down, shaking. Lowered down. And I can just imagine Jesus was the only one that really knew what was happening. So they're lowering this guy down in, in there, and this guy's shaking. Now imagine you that guy. He has no control because he was paralyzed. So he has no control of the situation. He couldn't get up and run away if he wanted to. He can't get out of it. He's subject to whatever's going to happen. He just has to be a part of it because he can't do nothing else. And so they lower him down in there, and the Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. And so Jesus didn't automatically say, you know, you're, uh, uh, you're healed. Jesus said your sins are forgiven. Mm. Hallelujah. Because he had an agenda. Remember what I said. Don't put earthly circumstances in front of God's kingdom agenda. Come on, come on. And his agenda was to get people saved. So he says this. He said to them, he said, see, your sins are forgiven. And then the, the religious leaders started saying, you know, how can you say that this guy's sins are forgiven? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Only God can do that. And Jesus' comeback was, I know what you're saying in your heart. He said, but just so you can understand that the Son of Man has power on earth. Yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. Not just where you're going, but on earth as well. He said, just, he said, so you can know that the Son of Man has power on earth. Arise and walk, and you carry the mat back home that carried you here. Hallelujah. You take it back home. And so the guy was healed. All of that was a wonderful part of the story. But I still haven't hit this the short, wonderful part of it. I want you to imagine in your mind, if you didn't imagine with me before, imagine with me now, that you're one of those four guys, especially the one whose idea it was to open up that roof. Mm. You imagine what it was like on the walk back home. Amen. Uh -huh. Amen. 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 You imagine what it felt like to see your friend. That you risk it all. You risk going to jail. You you uh, carried him, tied you out, and you had, had the faith to open up the roof. You taking all kinds of chances. Well, how do you feel? Now that he's walking with you, watching your friend walking in front of you. Hey, Amen. Amen. I imagine that they shouted. I imagine that they cried. I imagine that they laughed. But I tell you this one thing: I do know that every step the whole way back home. They will Praise rejoice. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Now I'm going to tell you the key to you uh, getting accomplished what God has called you to do in your life. The key is for you to see the end of the thing that you're believing for. What will it feel like to see you walking in that thing that you're believing for? You got to see yourself the same way that guy saw. That guy said, we've come too far. Either this Jesus is who he said that he is, or he's not, and I need to find out today. Hmm. Hallelujah. Some of y'all are waiting to find out if Jesus is who he said that he is. Amen. Some people wait 10 years. Some people wait 20. Some people wait 30. But God says that if you have faith right now, I'll show you who I am today. Amen. 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 I'll show you who I am today. Amen. And you have to let go of everything that's stopping you. That guy had to disconnect his emotional feelings from his friends. Everything that, you know, everything that would tell him not to do it, he had a million reasons why not. All that he, he had to see was, hey, look, i got to do this. I'm all in with this thing. 
And I'm telling you, we're not all in with God like that. If you're going to see God move, you got to get all in. I told the, the people the last service, I said, God will carry you. If you're faithful to God, he will carry you. But his goal is not always to carry you. He'll carry you until you can walk by yourself. Amen. And let me tell you how you walk by yourself. When you start believing God, that's when you walk by yourself. When you start believing what he said. Because guess what? Your faith gets contagious. That woman with the issue of blood, when she came over there and she saw she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. And she had to think herself, I can't get to, to pass all those people. I can't get over there to touch him. What's he going to say if I go pull it on his clothes? All these things probably ran through her mind. But, the, but all we know is that she went over there and she touched him. Now, I want to ask you, after bleeding for 12 years and doctors couldn't do nothing for you, how did she feel walking back home? Mm. Mm. How did she feel on her way back home? You got to get a taste for victory so strong in your heart that it becomes a hunger for victory. And once you get a hunger for victory, your hunger will lead, your hunger will lead you in the battle. And once you get in battle, guess what? The Bible says that God will fight the battle for you. Hallelujah. Amen. So everything else is divine after you get in the battle. Amen. Well, how can you say that? It sounds real good. The Bible says, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Yeah. God has hired us on to do a magnificent work for him. People need to be saved. People need to be encouraged. God needs platforms. But the only way it's going to happen is by faith. I, I, am, I am developing a, a good habit of prayer. That's what I'll say. Amen. But God showed me. He said, look, your prayer alone is not going to do it. He said, prayer has a purpose, but prayer is no substitute for faith. Prayer is not a substitute for faith. It's a combination of both. We, we, we that worship was worship in spirit and in truth. Hallelujah. Now you get yourself prayed up when you start believing you have some staying power. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have some power to work with. Let me tell you something. You're not going to get around and believe in God. There's no way in the world. You can pray 12 or 20 hours a day. But at some point, it's going to require some doing because the Bible says faith separated from works is dead. But the blessed part about it is the Bible says that it gives automatic guarantee for how we can get faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And remember, it's not faith in faith. It's not faith in your friend. It's not faith in you. It's not faith in the past. It's faith in God. Yeah, yeah, Amen. yeah. Amen. 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 I want to ask you this question. If you're here today, and I have two, two uh, requests I'm going to ask. Number one thing is, if you're here today and, and God's put a vision in your heart to do something, and let, me, let, me, let me talk to you about this. God can put a vision in your heart to have a business. How, how can God do that? Look, see, you're thinking all wrong. Because you're thinking about what you can do for yourself. But there are some people, God knows that the more that they have, the more they'll do for the kingdom. Amen. Right? So if God put a heart in your, in, in, a vision in your heart for ministry, for business, for whatever, some, something kingdom. All right? Something that's going to help the kingdom. Even if that's involving you having a car where you don't have one, or a better car so you can move around. But you, you're a kingdom person. I want you to come, and I want you to stand on this side right here. God's put a, a desire in your heart. You, you got a kingdom vision of some sort. I want you to come stand right here because I want to pray for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. It starts with a step. If you can't move out of your aisle in the church, then you're not going to move nowhere else. Yeah. Amen. 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 Okay, what do I do now? I feel like something different today, that new beginning. I can tell you.